Good evening. With the Ghana Learning Channel News in Capsule for Tuesday, October 26, 2021, I am Kingsley Bryan. Here's a look at some of the top stories we will be covering this evening. We'll tell you that the Lisa Unity arrives ahead of schedule. FPSO is twice the size of the current vessel. Region 3 pensioners receive cash grants. Government is committed to improving the lives of seniors. Then, no recorded cases of Miss C in children. Health Minister confirms amidst rising fears. And the news from the region, UWI signs historic agreement with Harvard. New lifelong learning unit program is launched. And on the international scene, Blue Origin to launch commercial space station. Orbital Reef to be operational by the end of this decade. And now for the news in detail. The Lisa Unity, the second floating production storage and offloading FPSO, which will operate in the giant oil fields offshore Guyana, arrived in Guyana on Tuesday morning. Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Bharat confirmed that the vessel arrived ahead of schedule via a social media post on Tuesday. The Lisa Unity left Singapore in early September, and it was expected to arrive by mid-November. The expected startup of production with this vessel is pegged at early 2022. This Lisa Unity vessel is twice the size of the one currently in operation. It is built to produce 220,000 barrels of oil per day, with an overall storage volume of up to 2 million barrels. Importantly, ExxonMobil stated that the Lisa Unity FPSO will be supported by a total of six drill centers and approximately 30 wells. This includes 15 production wells, nine water injection wells, and six gas injection wells. Phase two startup is expected in early 2022 and will develop approximately 600 million barrels of oil. Liza phase two is expected to cost $6 billion, including a lease capitalization cost of approximately $1.6 billion for the Lisa Unity FPSO vessel. And the government on Monday rolled out the $25,000 one-off cash grant to pensioners in Region 3. The campaign, which was spearheaded by Minister of Human Services and Social Security, Dr. Vindya Prasad, will provide financial support to pensioners for an additional month. Scores of citizens awaiting the grant at the various distribution sites welcomed it and lauded the government for the support. The government implemented the one-off grant to provide financial support to the elderly amidst the pandemic. Along with the grant, pensioners are also receiving their 2022 Old Age Pension Booklets. Some of the distribution centers in Region 3 include Potentia, Wales, Bellevue, Canal No. 2, Parfait Harmony, Vreden Hoop, Lenora, and Tushin, among others. All distribution sites are in the vicinity of the money transfer agencies, such as MoneyGram, Western Union, and SurePay, to ensure the process is smooth and timely. Pensioners are also advised to encash their vouchers before November 30. And now turning our attention to the health blotter. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said there are no recorded cases of multi-system inflammatory syndrome, or MIS-C a rare but serious condition associated with COVID-19, in which different body parts of children affected by COVID-19 become inflamed. Dr. Anthony said children generally get a milder form of the COVID-19 disease. As of Sunday, there were 5,594 confirmed cases among children in Guyana. MIS in children was first observed in Europe and pediatricians around the world have been asked to keep a close eye on the disease. According to the World Health Organization, symptoms of MIS-C include rash or bilateral non-purulent conjunctivitis or mucotaneous inflama inflammation signs, sorry, hypotension or shock, features of myocardial dysfunction, pericarditis, valvulitis, or coronary abnormalities, including echo findings. Evidence of coagulopathy, acute gastrointestinal problems, and elevated markers of inflammation, such as ESR, C-reactive protein, or procalcitonin. Minister Anthony noted that there needs to be at least two of these symptoms before the disease can be diagnosed. 
And now turn your attention to the world of sports. Jamaica's long jump record holder, Tajay Gale, has confirmed that he will be running the 100 meters next year. Gale made the announcement on social media on Monday. Open quote, well, it's official. I'll be running 100 meters next season. Sigh, I didn't want to do this to the sprinters, but oh well, wish me luck. End of quote, Gail wrote on his Twitter page. The MVP conditioned style athlete is no stranger to the show sprints and has run several 100 meters this year at the JOA and the JAAA Olympic Destiny Series. He recorded his best time of 10.18 seconds over the distance at the National Stadium in May. He has run 21.18 seconds over 200 meters. Gale soared to prominence after winning the men's long jump at the 2019 World Championships in Doha, Qatar, with personal best and Jamaican record of 8.69 meters. Gale had been hoping to add the Olympic title to his world title this summer. He advanced to the final in Tokyo, but injured his left knee in the process. As a result, he was unable to secure a position in the final eight. He has since fully recovered from that injury. And that story was extracted and modified from Loop Caribbean News. And in news from the region, history was made on Monday in Antigua and Barbuda as the Twin Island Nation became the first country in this region to offer lifelong learning courses with the Harvard School of Business and their Credential of Readiness program. Working adults will have the opportunity to sign up for classes in business analytics, economics for managers, and financial accounting through the UWI Five Islands Lifelong Program. Upon successful completion of the core program, Participants will earn the Credential of Readiness designation from Harvard Business School Online and the UWI Five Islands campus. The LLU was established in August of this year and will expose adult learners in the workplace to a diverse range of options to further boost capacity and sharpen their skills. Several professional development courses will be offered, giving participants the opportunity to engage in online and in-person studies via interactive features and knowledgeable and engaging facilitators. Registration for the 12-week Harvard program is currently underway. The deadline for registration is November 5, as the classes are expected to begin a few weeks later on the 23rd. And that story was extracted and modified from the Antigua Observer. And on the international scene, Blue Origin, the space tourism company owned by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, has announced plans to launch commercial space station. Bosses said on Monday that they hope to operate a station named Orbital Reef by the end of the decade. Promotional material released by the company claims that the station will be a mixed-use business park in space and will host up to 10 people. The company will partner with Sierra Space and Boeing to build the outpost. Blue Origin said the 32,000 square feet station would provide customers with an ideal location for filmmaking in microgravity or conducting cutting edge research and said it would also include a space hotel. At a press conference to launch the initiative, executives from Blue Origin and Sierra Space declined to give an estimate of the building's costs though the project seems assured of heavy funding from Mr. Bezos, who is committed to spending $1 billion a year on Blue Origin. The announcement comes as NASA searches for a proposal to replace the 20-year-old International Space Station, while funding for the station has been guaranteed. Until at least 2030, the outpost is in desperate need of repairs. And that story was extracted and modified from CNN. And that's our news broadcast for Tuesday, October 26, 2021. Please join us for a rebroadcast tomorrow morning. On behalf of myself and technical teams, thanks for watching. Please ensure to stay tuned to our regular programming. And remember to observe all the necessary precautionary methods to fight off COVID-19. We're all in this together. Good evening.